Welcome to The Practice Podcast, a show created by lawyers to help lawyers in life and business without all the complicated lawyer language. Let's welcome Bast Amron founders and your hosts, Jeff Bast and Brett Amron. Hi, Jeff. How are you, Brett, today? Um, fantastic. We just got back from lunch, feeling good, ready for a podcast. We had a great guest today. Excited? Are you as excited as I am? Anytime I get to sit next to you and have a conversation, I'm excited. All right. So he's matching my enthusiasm level. Do you go by Jim or James? Jim. All right. Jim Freed is our guest today. Woohoo! The one and only. Jim has worked in the commercial real estate industry for 35 years. He doesn't look that old. As a top mortgage broker and investment sales broker in Miami, he founded Sandstone Realty Advisors 20 years ago. He has closed, can I get a drum roll? Three billion in capital markets transactions. B, B, billion. Billion with a B. He's also partnered with Mill Creek Related Group, Lennar, and other national developers to close on multiple sites used to develop mixed-use projects. He's completed more land sales for apartment buildings in South Florida in the last two cycles than any other individual. He has also developed relationships in the family office niche and was named one of the family office real estate global advisors by Family Capital Magazine. He ran for Miami City Commission in 2019, and he's mentored dozens of students and young community leaders. In 2018, he was awarded the Miami-Dade Public School Alumni Achievement Award and... He's also a podcaster. You can listen to him talk about business and lifestyle on the podcast called Freed on Business, which airs weekly. And I understand in the near future is going to have a very special guest. Either with the name of, as I was going to say, with the name of Bast or Amron or both, one or both of us. Right. We're looking forward to that. Welcome, Jim. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. I wish everybody could see how high energy you are right now. <laughs> are you uh, surprised by that bio? It's pretty impressive. Yeah, I, actually, it makes me feel impressed. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if I could ever meet that guy. Yeah, I'm wondering I, if I, anybody's I, sitting here when we do one of these and they're like, wait, oh, they're talking about me? me? Is yeah. that me? I, I couldn't believe good to, it. I think it's yeah. good to hear a reflection of all, you know, like a summary of your accomplishments. And it's probably, I say summary because I'm sure we didn't cover everything, but. I have Jeff do that to me every morning, actually. I just read bio for me. Yeah, it makes me make feel a little better. better. I actually have yeah. to update it with all my new stuff that I've been doing, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, well, we want to hear about something you want to share. Yeah. Tell is us. this the first time you want to share about something? Happy that, to talk to you about something it. Something new? Uh, Just uh, give us one highlight of something new you're working on. Digital asset securities secured by real estate. What does that mean? That's tokens for real estate. Okay. Nice. And why would you need a token for real estate? Basically, I think that the term token is misconstrued. The token, if you're sitting in your office, turn around, look at your file cabinet, that's the token. Mm-hmm. Open it up and see the 500-page agreement. That's the smart contract that goes inside the token. And all it really is is syndication 3.0. So it started on a golf course with a bunch of folks and the tax attorney said, hey, would you like to have a three to one write off or pull your money out of your real estate deal? Everybody said yes. And the first golf course syndication was done. So if you have a token for the real estate, can we have a closing and you literally just hand me the token? You could do that, but that's really more of an NFT. The token is really a figurative or yeah, it's figurative. Virtual. It's a virtual thing and it's really code. It governs the transaction. So when you're doing your real estate syndication, instead of doing the whole big document, you do it online. Blockchain. And blockchain, effect, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can do A, A plus, D, Reg S. A lot of our clients are from overseas. Mm-hmm. We just JV'd with a broker dealer. We're signing that out and signing that up uh, right as I speak, basically. My partner's doing that. And we sent out our first consulting agreement and fee agreement before I hit the bricks to come here. So it's really an exciting time for us. So that, I mean, clearly we've heard blockchain, we've heard crypto and, you know, I don't whatever. say crypto. No, I don't, I don't. I'll say it here. My view is it is a Ponzi scheme. But anyway. Yeah, it is a Ponzi scheme. But is that the trend, like in, in terms of real estate, all real estate transactions are going to be blockchain. We're not going to have the old documentation and you got to go sit for a closing. Well, you're a bunch of lawyers. Break. I don't want to ruin your... We don't do we don't do real estate transactions. Okay, work. so so it'll also provide the bankruptcy and liquidation attorneys with a very clean path to follow down the road should that ever happen. Also, because it's all logged in and secured on the blockchain. Right. But, you mean title, title, right. title, right. Title, right. title, title, transactions, transfer of shares, following the money, all the things that some people didn't do. This is not an unsecured currency play. This is fully SEC and FINRA compliant. Mm -hmm. 
It's all above board and two hands, best used for recaps because it's a best efforts circumstance right now. But in the past, you've seen crowdfunding, air quotes there for the people that aren't watching on their radio, air quotes. What's uh, a radio? Just kidding. That's okay. <laughs> Are there stream service? I forgot my... High five to your brother, Randy, by you. the way. Killing. Uh, thank you. Love him from... Killing the conversation, from, Jeff. From, uh, Shout out to Randy West. We're exactly. going to have to bring him down here. Did you know Jeff was up for podcaster of the year, right? There, I mean, I could tell in this room. Is that the idea? No, no, no. it was just that segment right there. Where I, we're I had to cut him off. It was getting a little your, too. No, technical. it's true. It's tremendous. No, I don't want to do technical. No, I want to do fun, entertaining, and light. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk to us about real estate. What's happening in Miami? Is it softening? What's happening in South Florida? It's really great that you would ask that question because it's how I got my original radio show. I was, really? uh, yeah, huh? I was going on. I was called by a friend of mine. He said that he was doing a radio show on business in Miami. Did I want to come on? And I said sure. We get in there. I was. A wonderful rainy evening in the summertime, and the guy leans in. And he goes, "Jim Freed's here. We're going to talk about real estate. We're going to talk about the condos on Brickle, and you guys will appreciate this." I lean in and said, "Which one of the exploding cigars do you want to talk about first? Right. Yeah. right? And uh, we went to break. The guy came. The guy that was running the radio station came up to me and said, "We need you to have a podcast." I mean, well, at the time, I guess it was a radio show, and right. I said, "Sure." What does that mean? And then, you know, seven hundred and twenty episodes plus later, here we are. Wow. So on the radio. Right. And for the younger listener that doesn't That's understand. That's the thing that was on AM. Right. You actually had to go to a studio. Yes. And actually sit and record. Was it no, live? It was live. It was live. It was live. Okay. It was live. And okay. I reached a fascinating audience. I didn't realize how many people and who I was reaching until I went up to a Marlins game one mm-hmm. time, was picking up my tickets at the will call window. They didn't have them ready for me. I said my name. The Metro police officer that was standing next to me goes, are you really Jim Freed? And I go, yes. Are there multiple people that want to be Jim Free that fake it? Like, I think everybody wants to be well, Jim Well, okay. Free. I mean, I that's do. Why, that's why the podcast is good. Just so, so great. It's exactly. all voyeurism. And I go, yes. He goes, we love your radio show. Uh, no kidding. Know. That's, that's great. That's cool. Like, that, Apparently, right? they would sit out there and listen. And, you know, I'm kind of cheeky at times, I guess. I don't know. But they had fun. I had fun with them. I took a photo with the gentleman. And it was really kind of fun that I would. And I've been recognized before. And then I went to this was the... Before the first F1 race a couple oh, right. years ago, uh-huh. yeah. Bloomberg had this event. I went in. Uh, I was still very sensitive about COVID. My wife had a kidney transplant. I even walked in. You didn't see me, but I have a mask on until I get comfortable in an area. Sure. So I was at this event. I was freaking out, wearing a mask. All these people were walking around. I would call them the crypto rich. <laughs> and... Um, So I got all freaked out. It wasn't my environment. I walked out. Uh, I was sitting out. It was at the Fiena Hotel. I was in the little lobby there. Took off my mask. Had my badge on that said Jim Freed. A gentleman came up to me. said whatever his name was from Los Angeles. He goes, you're Jim Freed? I go, yeah. He goes, I love your show. I go, no, you, you, you don't. Can curse. You, you can curse it. I, I, bring I, said, it. I said, BS. Okay. And he says, no. I go, okay, well, I'll test you. Who's your favorite guest? He goes, Olivia Ramos. Now, unless you listen to my show, you wouldn't know that I have Olivia Ramos on. Olivia is a founder of an AI company down here that does real estate. When he said that, I said, you really do listen. And wow. this, this just random person yeah, from great. across the country that's came fantastic. up to me. And then it's now it does happen. So you stopped the radio show when? And- well, COVID came actually before COVID. What happened with the radio? Radio show was that the radio station went automated and all Christian broadcasting and my content typically isn't going to be consistent with that. And <laughs> so, so, um, right. that was at the end of 19. So the beginning of, of 20, I was looking for a place to do my podcast. I was going to like this pirate radio station that really didn't work out too well. And I started doing it from my house and my producer, no offense, my producer said, have you ever heard of Zoom? And I go, what's Zoom? And it was a tremendous episode. I had a couple of real estate people on Knees and Gazden was on. I invited them to my apartment to do it. And then COVID hit two weeks later and we went full remote to Zoom. It's been on Zoom and I love it. I love the podcast better than the radio show because the podcast, I send it to the most leads, the people that I want to have listened to it. And I use it as a relationship builder and mm-hmm. it's a top of mind thing. And the regular radio station, I said, well, that's just like watering the lawn. Right. So this is, uh, I find podcasting to be an incredible way to not only express yourself, but to get people to know you. And one of the things that we all know from business is that anybody who interviews you to do business with them, if you're one of five people, every person that got that interview is equally qualified. At this point, we're all right. qualified. Yeah. 
And so who's the person that's picking going to pick? They're going to pick the one they like and that they want to spend time with. Right. How are they going to know that? Well, they have 750 chances to find out who I am. I've done thousands of episodes. My, It's cute. My 1,000th episode, I like to say, was I invited him on for it, was Cesar Alvarez, who I refer to as Abogado Gigante. <laughs> <laughs> that's a thousand crazy. episodes is crazy, that's, man. Yeah. And that's in Wait, since no, that was COVID. the thousandth interview. Oh, my not gosh. Not the thousandth episode. I'm not at a thousand episodes yet. Only like seven, eighteen, or nine. But that's podcast episode seven hundred plus. Podcast and radio. They're all available on the freedombusiness.com website. I have all kinds of people that I interview. We talked about it briefly earlier that I look at it as it's voyeurism. Mm -hmm. People do social media to be voyeurs. They're not looking at something that doesn't appeal to them. They're looking at something that does appeal to them that they want to do, or they're looking at something and saying, what an idiot, look what he just did. Right. And so it's emotive, it's emotional. I just taped one with the person that runs the Miami Transplant Institute because my wife got the transplant. This is the woman that coached us through, helped us through and everything else. And on the podcast, it's visual. So you can actually see me crying and wiping my face. I thank my, I've had Warren Henry's been my sponsor for well over a decade. I thank them because they're also members of the National Kidney Foundation. If anybody wants to really know about me, you go watch that episode. That's it. That's all you really need to know. All right. So um, let's uh, just end it right here and we'll just go watch that one. No. No. no, you could also, you know, we <laughs> you know, we we're could, still going to dig a little. We could that? record while we're watching. And then we can watch his reaction to him. I, I would just cry him. and get all snotty. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't think a list. Yeah. We I do think. have a box of tissues here. We do. Always. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about, first of all. It's freaking me out. It's like I'm talking to his brother. It's driving me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I swear to God. All right. For those who don't know him, my brother, Randy Bast, we're going to have him on as a guest one day. Very tremendously accomplished entrepreneur. And just a good guy. Well, you know. That and a good, and he's a good big brother. Well, that's even nicer. We got to give him that. He that's, is a large that's probably, person. That's he's probably his most you. important accomplishment. He is bigger he than He's a good too. big brother. He was something of a mentor to me and when I was You're young, lucky to have I was younger. That. Now I have this guy, Brett Amron. He's my mentor. Most people don't have mentors, which is why I put that on my list of accomplishments because I want to motivate people to reach out to other people to help them succeed. I yeah, don't think you, you can what, find anything more. Let's talk about that. Yeah, why don't you tell us about that? That's you, been you a mentor thing. Mentor dozens of students. Right, and we've talked about that, right? A, mentoring, you want to hear about that and how you got into that. And that's so rewarding for you and for the students, I'm sure. But also just asking for help, right? To me, that... A lot of people don't do that, and we talked about that on the show on different episodes as well. You have to have a really good personal self-image, which I guess is double. I said it twice, but you have to have a really good self-image in order to reach out and help somebody out, I think, because first you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in what you're telling somebody. Well, I had never thought of this stuff before. This is great. You are really a good interviewer. <laughs> and so I didn't know that I would have anything to offer and I'm on the Center for Real Estate Studies board at UF. Mm -hmm. And a lot of young people go through there. Go Gators. Eat them up. <laughs> go Gators. And, oh, gosh, you're not supposed to say that anymore. And um, Really? Eat them up? You got to go off. You can't say eat them up? Why can't we say eat them up? The reason that you can't say eat them up is- Which we've now of, said three or four times. It's, <laughs> part, of, it's <laughs> part of cancel culture. Oh, really? Yeah, but yeah, because but because was... during the old days, they used to throw- people into the uh, swamp say, uh, eat them uh, up. and okay. let them be eaten. Right. Okay, all right. So that's, at least that's, that's what I read. I don't really know. I wasn't around when all that was sure. going on. Right. Okay. So anyway, all right. So let's go back. Yeah, yeah I don't want to talk about anything like that. I want to go back to the positive thing. So I've always thought and experienced personally that real estate was a mentorship business. And when I talk to the young people that want to get involved in real estate, I tell them that the most important thing, the most important thing is who you're going to marry. That's the most important decision you ever make in your life. But within business, the most important decision is who you're going to hook your star to. And I've been blessed to have some tremendous mentors. My first mentor was a gentleman who was a professor at UCF in real estate after he mentored me. I think he's retired now. His name is Owen Beitch. And he taught me how to analyze and think through real estate because my first job out of college was working for an accounting firm doing feasibility studies for things like Pleasure Island. It was so long ago that Pleasure Island has been redeveloped. Man, I'm an old man. Then my next mentor was a person, a woman named Susan Karras. She's now basically a senior person at JLL in the Mid-Atlantic. Tremendous person. The best thing that she taught me was that when you 
get bored or uptight, just distract yourself. I would always have to go down and get her the new People magazine. And I said, why am I doing this? And suddenly I realized it's so she can relax between these crazy that's phone calls on the gazillion dollar transactions. Right. And I do the same thing today. I got the stack of stuff. I read it when I have to or, the, you know, whatever. The next mentor I had was a gentleman named Harvey Weidenfeld who ran Sonnenblatt Goldman down here locally. And then after that, a person that a lot of people in real estate down here will know became my mentor, and that was Ezra Katz. And so I've had some really tremendous people. Each person has taught me something different. And one of the most important things that Ezra taught me was take every cold call, meet every person that wants to meet you because you don't know why they want to meet you. And uh, if they have made the effort to respect you enough to seek you out, then you should make the effort and respect them enough to respond and talk to them and find out how you can do things together. I like that bit of advice, but it has become increasingly more difficult to adhere to that rule because now with social media and technology, I get so many, I'm sure you guys do as well, no, so many out email there. outreaches that are just <laughs> yeah. garbage sales calls or whatever. And usually my rules, I ignore them unless I have some connection to them. If you know, if they were introduced to me by somebody, obviously I'll take that meeting. But if it's just a cold call, I usually ignore it. And then on the second or third email, I'm gonna, I'll write back and I'll just say no thanks. If, unless it's something I'm interested in, of course. But I like that. I like that rule right. that Ezra right. Katz, you know, advised you on. But it's become harder to follow that. Well, with the advent of email right. and social media, like LinkedIn, how many LinkedIn requests or messages do you get from people that are clearly trying to sell you something? And you just have to sort of vet that. And the same thing with emails, you know, and it just becomes harder. I agree with you. So when I get one of those in mails on yeah. LinkedIn, sometimes I'll, if it's a request to connect, I'll evaluate it, see if they're really in my silo. A lot of them are from overseas. They want to work on my podcast. Then I just delete because I have a tremendous team. Of course, I need to see you guys too. Shout out to too. Nelson. High Shout five out. to Nelson. That's right. <laughs> But usually I try to keep that clean. I've stopped accepting a lot of LinkedIn's because I want somebody on my LinkedIn profile to to really know them. Well, it becomes just, a meeting place. I literally just sent you an invite right before we started. You'll recording, accept. So you I should hope you'll reject. accept. I'll reject. accept. But I, I but reject. I have to look at the photo first because I would then I would see that you're related to the other guy that right. we've met, mentioned yeah. like fifty two times already. Yeah. Yes. All right. So how did you become a mentor? Like you know, you talked about all the mentors that you had. It's a you natural Because I think thing. a lot of people like the idea of mentoring, but you can't just find someone on the street and say, hey, can I mentor you? So you've become a mentor and you've now done it dozens a lot of, of times. times with students and community leaders. How did you become a mentor? How does one become a mentor? Usually it has to be the person approaches you. Right. And I'll give you one of the most recent examples. I went to UF. I'm an AE Pi. I went up there early for a football game. We usually have the UF Center for Real Estate Studies board things around a football game. I went up there. I went back to the fraternity house. You can see the video of me doing the shots in the backyard down the ice. Oh, right. The oh, ice yeah, thing. Ice I don't even know how to say yeah, it. In the, in the video, they're yelling, 1984, 1984. Oh. And then I go back in <laughs> oh, and there's, and there's, well, <laughs> yeah. you know. I yeah, can't. listen, own 84 it. 84, your pledge class? 84 or? is how old I felt after I did the <laughs> shots. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, my pledge class is 78. Now everybody knows I'm 1,010 years old. And so there was a young man inside. He went up to me. He says, hi, I'm in the real estate program. I'd like to get to know you and get to meet you. I said, come see me at the event in a couple of days because right now ain't the time to network me. <laughs> and he was a lovely guy. Turns out he was very successful on campus, very successful at the fraternity. And we touched base at the event. I introduced him to a friend of mine that happened to be looking for somebody at the time. They are together now, seven, eight years later, very successful. We talk occasionally, and that's an example of how it happened sure. to become a mentor at UF in the real estate program, they advise the young people to get a mentor. Usually they'll reach out to me. I found now that a lot of undergrads are reaching out to me and I pretty much have the same speech because they always want to get mentored. They really don't know what that means, but really what they right. want to do is they want to get their leg up on their first job. Right. And so what I tell people is that I'm more than happy to help you on your, help you get your first job who is it you want to meet and why? Silence. Silence, right. Silence. They have no idea. Silence. Right. And I say, until you can answer that question, I can't introduce you to anybody because, and I'll go back to a term I used earlier, you're just watering the lawn. Yeah, I mean, I like that because it fosters them thinking, right? To me, mentorship, it's a two-way street, right? So someone has right. to be interested in mentoring somebody, but 
the person who's being mentored has to be open and willing to accept it and know why they're doing it, right? And so I love that idea. I think that's great. Well, they want a job, so they want me to introduce them to somebody. Right. Why would I introduce you to somebody that you don't even know or have no idea about? Right. When when somebody wants to meet me, I want them to know that they at least look me up on LinkedIn. Sure. You know, walk in and say, go Gators or whatever, and know one little thing to show me. And a perfect example, another example is I had a group of students come down from UF. It was 2006, because I remember I was sharing office space with my friend Kobe at the time. And three of them came down in the same car, three different personalities. They all wanted the same job. I go, you're three different types of people. You're not, you're not going to be the same person. I say, quiet person doesn't like networking, appraiser. Person that can't <laughs> shut up, that can't say no. Every time I tell them that they're not qualified, that's the broker. <laughs> Detail-oriented with a little personality, developer. You know, right. and so one of the young people came up to me. That's they, what mentoring is. I mean, you're guiding them a little bit, right? Yes, and they don't know what to ask or not ask. No. So you got to leave them breadcrumbs. But they're young, and so. But if you send them back, right, with the idea, okay, listen, you need to do this, this, yeah. Like everyone knows why they're trying to reach out to a mentor in college. The result is, look, I want my first job. I want to understand the industry. I want to get a little more insight. But if they're just sort of on the surface, then the mentorship's not going to work at all, right? Like you said, I go back and I ask them, why do you want to meet this person? Why do you want? And there's silence. And so it forces them to think. And those that come back to you are the ones that you're going to be able to mentor, right? It's their first lesson. Right. It's their first lesson. Right. Well, and I'm wondering during these exchanges, is anyone using the term mentor or mentee or are these... People reaching out who say, I'm interested in learning from you or picking your brain. Is it something like that? Or is somebody actually saying, can you be my mentor? A lot of times they specifically ask me if I will be their mentor. And they don't have to just be from UF. I'll give you a perfect example. I go to these networking events all over town. I meet young people now because FIU and Nova and all the school UM send their students. They get them a discount or whatever. They barter in there. And this one person came up to me and asked me, would you mentor me? I'm go to FIU. I know you're a guy. I said, sure, call me. And I went away. They don't call person, you. Oh, person called me. They did. Okay. Person yeah. called me. We went and we met at Starbucks by my house, mm-hmm. which is I hold court there. I'll admit it. One of the guys that sits on the UF board with me walked by. I left this young person with that person and went in and got coffee. Oh, test number one, bud. Because the that was I was good cop bad copping I was raging because <laughs> the kid you know he was the person that wanted to be the broker but had the personality of the appraiser mm. <laughs> so you know all the same people always go there and sit around me and you know they kind of know me by now I will admit that Derek Jeter goes there and we do have the same sneakers <laughs> and I had them first and you know when I went in and then I came out then another person walked in from real estate and I had the person talk to them then they both got up and left because they had to go to work and I was working when I was talking to the young person. And I kept telling the person that they needed to be stronger. They needed to ask. They needed to think. They needed to push. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Nelson. You're good. You're good. And no, no, no. I think I arced on him and went deaf on that one. But now I'm getting engaged in what I'm talking about. So I said, you have to push. And I said, do you really want this? I said, this real estate is all about rejection. Nobody wants to talk to you. You have to have something to add. Even if you do, no one really cares. You have to break the door down. I said, can you do that? And the guy really didn't know. But he goes early on, he said, can I turn on my phone and tape this? I said, sure, no problem. So he taped it, taped it. I said, okay, we're done talking. And get up and leave. So he got up and left, sent me an email, wrote all the things down. He's done this now a second time. But when he got up and left, one of the regulars that usually sits next to me and has coffee, who's, you know, crusty, you know, crusty person that lives in the Grove that goes with a nasty T-shirt and the shorts worth a billion dollars kind of person. And I go, was I too strong? He said, no, actually, you were tremendous, and it was actually inspiring. And I said, I hope so. Yeah. And so, you know. Are you mentoring that guy now, too? Or? No, that guy just yeah. still sits no, there in his ratty outfit yeah. with the coffee, but we sit and we do the fist bump every, you know, and I, but I mean, I've gone in there, and it's really was worthwhile and, and enjoyable. Last summer, I had my nephew, who's, uh, we're going to have to say it, he, he's now going to be a senior at UGA. That's the school in Athens that we don't discuss. You're right. <laughs> and he wanted to be in big data. And two years ago, he came down and spent the summer with me, and I introduced him to a lot of people so he could make the have meetings and find out what people do. And I said, big data, ha, 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 what a waste of time. 
real boring. Now what do I do? What's my real big push now? What drives all of the real estate tokenization? Big data. Thank big you. Data, yeah. <laughs> so so big. high five to Simon Kofsky. So you, you're the mentee. Yeah, I learn situation. from everybody. See, right. Well, that's, I think, what a lot of people lose about mentoring is that how much you learn as a mentor from the mentee or from the process of mentoring as well. Yeah, and there's another young man who now goes to UF. He's on their student investment board or whatever that is. He's a lot smarter than me. His brother's working at Google. This kid's working everywhere. And he just sat there. Now, he's not going to be the broker because he's really quiet, but he's a genius. He'll do all the background work. He'll team up. Like, I have a partner in New York. His name is Jim, too. I always say my job is to say, hi, my name is Jim. Meet my avatar in New York that's smart, Jim. Right. <laughs> well, made you laugh and it disarmed right. exactly. you. And it's yeah. the total truth because I really don't know anything. He knows right. everything. Right. Yeah, you got to surround yourself with smart people. That's something we talk about a lot. That's why. That's, that's why. I, I, oh, I come on, with Jeff. Oh, I took it. your line. No, I took it. Your line. Here it is. Here that's it is. Here it is. Here it is. That's right. Okay. So, but, but even, sorry, but even in the mentor mentee, really, even outside of that, just in life, you have to be open to learning new things every day, right? And be willing to be open because that's how you evolve and that's how you get into different things like, in this case, the tokenization of or big data real estate. Because had you been closed-minded, you'd be doing the same thing over and over again. And yeah. I saw behind. actually an opportunity. Yeah. I saw an opportunity. I go to these tech events. All mm-hmm. the people behind this are technology people. They talk to each other. They go, how come nobody talks? How do you, nobody gets this? And what they don't realize is they've been trying to sell a new way to finance property when money was free. Right. Now it's not. Well, when <laughs> you can't get money, then yeah. you're open to new ideas. Right. So that's why people did, didn't return my call about this two years ago or a year ago or now, signing up for the demo, becoming clients, knowing that this really is an, an idea and currency that is taking off. There are large institutions that are teaming up with us to do this. There are large RIAs, large investment funds. It's really interesting to watch. I had Ethan Penner on my show, you know, a couple of years ago. And he says that when he started Nomura, there was no capital in the marketplace. And if he started a year earlier, nobody would have been doing it. You couldn't get business started a year later. Too many people doing it, but he started at just the right time and hit the hockey stick growth. And it was really, you know, timing. Sure. It's timing and patience. I still do my regular real estate business. I'm not yeah. I'm not doing just this because it hasn't taken off fast enough at the beginning yet. So I've got all my current stuff. So I'm not all uptight all the time about, oh my God, I've got to make this happen or I'm yeah. going to not be able to pay my bills. I'm paying my bills. I'm making my money. It's just a matter of, I want to do something creative and innovative. And the path to creativity and innovation is not linear. It's non-linear. It's full of fits and starts. And all of that keeps you vital. People right. can't see it. I wish yeah. it was a video because my hands He's are got shaking. got his hands up and my hands shaking. are shaking. You can see the electric bolts flying the out of them. Emotion is visible. The key, and Brett said this, you have always been and remained open. Open to new ideas, to new people, new opportunities. And so that's, I think that's the lesson. I'm open for business. Open. I love it. I love it. And if you love this show, then give us a review. Leave us a review. Subscribe. Share the show sharing the show and subscribing and leaving reviews helps others find the show helps us produce content helps us have superstar guests like Jim Friedon and look at that that was a kiss he blew it Brett I'm a little <laughs> I'm a little uh, don't be land, jealous we'll do SEO together land, <laughs> land increase our reach land the plane thank you thank you Jim thanks for coming on oh, thank you for Nelson, having me Nelson thanks for thank everything you, Brett this was thanks great. for being my partner thank you to Bast and Amron or is it Amron and Bast it's Bast and Amron Depends and on the day. Amron and Depends on the day. We're both here. <laughs> Nelson, thanks, man. Jeff, what can I say? For more information on this show and other resources, visit BastAmron.com and connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram at Bast Amron.